Hello, my name is Adam Wolf, and I'm a physical therapist. Just wanted to take a quick minute uh, in between sessions here at lunch for Rock Tape Teaching. Just wanted to take a quick minute and talk about uh, stability and mobility. It's been a big conversation over the past couple of days, certainly, and it's something I've been thinking a lot about. And tradition has taught us that stability and mobility are sort of different things. Uh, I equate stability and mobility to opposite ends of the same spectrum. And we need, as Gary Gray would say, too much stability or too much mobility is not a good thing. We need the right amount of mobility over stability, or what Gary Gray calls most stability. It's quite important to have the right amount. It's a little bit different than the traditional joint by joint approach where we talk about one joint being mobile and another joint being stable and another joint being mobile and all the way up alternating between stability and mobility. While I can see the value in that and I certainly think that there's a lot of truth to that, I also think that looking at it from this perspective of every joint needs to have the right amount becomes important. And so the equation uh, that's important, the way to think about it is when people are walking, we need to increase motion. And when people walk, you know, a lot of people will walk like this, you know, kind of floor to shuffle, as my old man would say, uh, lacking the ability to go through a lot of that sort of frontal plane sway or translation of the hips that's important. They didn't wake up just not being able to do that and their hip hurting. Let's say that they hurt their hip going through this motion and it hurts when they go into that position when they're walking, they're not gonna go to that position if it hurts. So all of a sudden they start to shorten up their stride and after a while, not only is the movement pattern grooved, but the tissue starts to bind together because if we think about it, blood or fluid enters tissue based on pressure differentials in the tissue. If one tissue, uh, if tissue can't get fully long to fully short, there's not as much blood that's gonna pass through that tissue, which means there's not as much oxygen that's gonna pass through the tissue, which means literally there's a chemical reaction that starts to bind the tissue together. And so we need to create situations to take that tissue, let's say this part of the hip right here, through that lengthening movement. But if we do it with somebody that's in this position, the irony is they're too stable, somebody that walks like this. And so if all we ever do is go ahead and increase the stability, and try to increase their mobility, excuse me, then we're setting them up for more stability. So we need to create environments where we can take that tissue through its length and position in an integrated fashion, but do it where we can be very stable while we do it. So I use the true stretch, a door frame uh, and a chair it can be a poor man's true stretch or, or uh, uh, other things that you can use. And so if I'm in this cage right here and I'm trying to go through this motion and start to get some adduction in the frontal plane, if I can hold on with both hands and both feet, well now I've got uh, four points of stability right now. And so then I can start to drive my hips maybe on that 45 degree right vector to start to lengthen out that tissue in an authentic way. I'm kind of driving my hips in this way. After a while, once I start to get that movement, right here I'm very stable, I can work on mobility. I can take a hand away. Now I have three points of stability and can go through the same motion. Maybe I have my hand drive that motion and now all of a sudden uh, I have to stabilize that motion. So I'm still working on stability. I'm sorry, I'm still working on mobility, but I'm doing it from a very stable place because three points of stability. Then maybe I can go to two points of stability, or maybe it's a hand and a foot, and I start to take a step to drive a little bit more dynamic motion to the point where I can go through that whole motion and get that length and get in and out cleanly in a way that they're uh, not feeling like they're unstable. Uh, because the reality is we want to try to increase their sphere in which they're stable in, uh, everybody for and so if we could do that that's setting them up authentically for success and taking them from a very a stable area or environment where they can work on mobility to a very mobile environment where they have to work on stability and the motion at the joints are the same because remember that it, it doesn't matter who we work with whether it's an elite level athlete or somebody who's a little bit more regressed the motions at the joints are the same but what changes is the speed of the motion, the velocity of the motion, and the amplitude of the motion. And those are the variables that we can take advantage of if we go about it from this integrated thought process. So just wanted to take a quick couple of minutes. I'm gonna go eat my lunch now. Got some ass beef, I don't get to eat that, but I figure on a beautiful Sunday, I might as well uh, splurge a little bit here in between uh, this uh, fascia movement tape session. So thanks again. Hopefully this uh, gets a little conversation going and figure out how you can use this in your practice too. Thanks.